Today, as you listen to this teaching by Pastors Ralph and Joanne Hone, we hope you'll enjoy it and learn some practical ways to walk into the awesome life God has for you. For more information and for more free teaching, visit our website, www.tapintothesource.com. And if you're visiting for the first time, no matter where you are, whether you're viewing online or there in Winnipeg or here in this house, I would like to, as a visiting guest, say welcome home. You know, let this be home for you. When you walk through those front doors, you know, I just want your heart to be able to be at rest and recognize, you know yes. what, welcome home. And that we thrive in community. You know, we don't in isolation, but we thrive in community. And the, and the better we're connected with one another, the more vulnerable we are, you know, with our relationships, the deeper they go, all of a sudden we can be strength for one another. Mm -hmm. You know, we can be a voice of encouragement and help for one another because a strategy or a scheme of the enemy is simply this, to divide and conquer. And so in relationships, it tends to be that's where we get hurt the most. In relationships, you know, that's where, you know, it, it, it goes the deepest. But as well, it's within relationships that we're healed. Yes. And so a lot of times, you know, the enemy's like, if I can create strife, if I can create, you know, friction, if I can, you know, uh, cause an offense, whatever it might be. And if I harbor that all of a sudden, then I will remove myself to a place of isolation and I'll separate myself, you know, from those that I really need to be close to. Mm -hmm. And so. I'm just encouraging you, whatever that offense might be, recognize, hey, it might be really real. Mm -hmm. It might have really happened. It may have been said or done to you. Never should have, but you have the choice. You can either harbor that and hold on to that and hold that against the other person, or you can take that offense and send it away and begin to serve because that is the heart of your heavenly father. Because God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. He, he has given each of us the ministry of reconciliation. Say reconciliation. Reconciliation. That is the heart of your heavenly father, is to reconcile. To reconcile means two, two ways that I see it, is this. The first is to be able to take that which is incompatible... And to make it compatible. That's, that's my father. And then the other one is that he's willing to involve himself with the uh, consequences of our choices and to make a way out for us. That is reconciliation. So me in my brokenness, God came to me and loved me. Mm -hmm. And he came and he showed a way out for me. For me, he came. I was completely incompatible. But my father, he came and made me compatible through the sacrifice of Jesus. You see, that is a heart of a father, to reconcile. And that, that's what happens in family. Mm -hmm. That's what happens in community. We can begin to serve one another. And that's why we want to say welcome home. This is our home. We are all family. We share the same dad. So why don't we spend the next part of the service just talking about the most things that we most love about our dad. I think that Joanne really covered my heart this morning when she spoke because I was praying for all of you, knowing that you'd be coming in here with so many different feelings and so many different memories and so many different even hurts. And, and some of you are celebrating an incredible dad, but yet I just love the fact, like as you said, we all share the same good, good father. So can we just talk about him for the next 45 minutes and celebrate him and talk about the things that only a dad can give us? And I think if we could title today's message, it would be to just celebrate the fact that there are things that only a dad can give us. Good. Sorry. I don't like my earrings today. There we go. <laughs> All right. I hated those earrings. <laughs> they didn't show anyway with all this hair. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know who we... we, we well, she was holding a sign that said, take off your earrings. I hate your and earrings. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know I was wearing them today. <laughs> and it was just like... I, I, knew, I knew we were in church and I shouldn't wear my earrings. So. <laughs> I was like... Okay, one thing I love, we're just going to go on and on and on, but one of the things 
Um, let's just talk about this. God is a triune God. There is a trinity. There is Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And for years and years, I was, I, I've always been grateful for this. I grew up in a Christian home, and I grew up with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was a young girl. But I always thought, it's so great that I always worship this God. But in the last few years, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to develop a, a, like a unique relationship with my Father in heaven, a unique relationship with Jesus as my, as my um, best friend, as my big brother, as my lover. Like God is so many things. And then the Holy Spirit is my comforter, my teacher, my counselor. But there is a unique relationship that we have with our heavenly Father. Not that we separate the three, but we have a unique relationship with three. And that is actually spoken about in the Bible when Jesus came to earth and he had a relationship with his father. And I think that's the best example that we can have is whatever relationship he had with the father, that is an example to us of the kind of relationship that we can have with the father. Jesus, in fact, he, he says, when I take a look at his life, he came and did two primary things. Number one, to declare the decrees of the kingdom. Repeatedly, he says, for the kingdom of God is like unto mm -hmm. the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. He began to declare the decrees of the kingdom. And then secondly, he began to introduce God as father. Never had that ever happened before. But Jesus comes on the scene and he begins to identify God as father, my father. And he prayed to my father. And that was the most intriguing element to his disciples. Because the disciples, they asked Jesus really this one thing. They said, Jesus, teach us to pray. We, we recognize that there's a uniqueness. There's something really unique about you. And we wake up in the morning and you're gone. We, we're all of a sudden working with the crowd and you're gone. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you're, you're not to be found because you're away with your father. father. And the disciples were extremely intrigued by this. And they said, Jesus, teach us to pray. And so that, I believe that is probably one of the deepest invitations today is, yes, I want to know the decrees of the kingdom. I want to know how his kingdom works, but it works out of relationship. It works out of knowing God as Father. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that the enemy is really trying to do is to destroy the image of God or the image of Papa, Father God, in the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's why marriage is so valuable, so very, very important because it's the role of a father that speaks identity dignity, value, and worth into the heart of a son or a daughter. And if the enemy can destroy marriages, if the enemy can get the father out of the home, mm -hmm. it's not just about the marriage, mm -hmm. but more it's about the image of God in the earth. And if he can bruise an individual's heart towards their heavenly father, if they can give them a sense or a feeling of alienation that God, he'll abandon me just like my earthly father abandoned me. He won't be faithful just as my earthly father has not been faithful. So the, the, the scheme of the enemy is really to wound our hearts, mm -hmm. to cause us to have a limiting belief right. about who God really is. And so the invitation I, I say to you today, again, is would you come? Would you be willing to be taught of the Holy Spirit of how you can connect yet again with the extravagance of your father's love? Because it's a father's love that is pursuing you. He'll never give up on you. He'll never abandon you. He'll never turn you away. Rather, he is continually pursuing you in, his, in the extravagance of his love. How do I know that? Because he gave his only son. That's, I mean, that's how valuable you really, really are. That he would give the life of his only son that he might obtain you. And I think of the mystery. Everyone just say mystery. Mm. I'm 51 years old. I've got... Yeah, you are. Yes. I have an... <laughs> I have this... I just want to tell you a little bit about my life because we just get I'm to share... I'm only 49. Oh, I yeah, guess. whatever. He's not. <laughs> we have... Um, I just want to share our hearts with you because 
Um, I said I grew up in a Christian home, but I also grew up with a very loving, um, gentle um, dad who loved God with all his heart. When I would wake up in the morning, every day of my life pretty much, even to this day, if I were live, staying at his house in Winnipeg, he would be reading his Bible and studying between about 5 and 7 in the morning. He loves God that much, okay? That's what I grew up with, and I know I'm going to start crying a little bit because I know that not everyone has that feel. In fact, it's extremely rare. I'm probably a point zero zero one percent of, of people that can say that their dad was never mean to them or ever. Like, I just was loved. I was loved. I was loved. But the reason why I say the word mystery is because there's some kind of a mystery that I cannot explain. After 51 years of having this great, amazing dad, what is it? That when he talks me on the phone and calls me his beautiful daughter, why does it reach me in a place that no one else can? Why is it that he has access to something that even my husband has a different access? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's not that we're gauging love or anything like that. But I think there's something that we won't understand until we get to the other side of heaven of how important it is to know if we can somehow receive this love. Right. From our Father in heaven. And I know I've talked to many people about their relationship with God. And they'll say, you know, I can accept Jesus. He's my, he's my big brother. He's my healer. I, he's my best friend. I can talk with Jesus and commune with Jesus. But when it comes to Father God, I, I, right. I, I, I'm a little scared of that. I, I haven't been able to open my heart to that. And I don't judge that because I think... If we've been damaged or bruised, as much to the degree as that touches me in a certain place, that my dad has that access to me in a way that no one else in this world does, how much more if that very access has been damaged, how deep the damage goes. Do you know what I'm saying? And I don't say that to discourage you. I'm just saying it's worth fighting for the healing to begin right. believing that your father is not just a good, good father. And I'm not kidding you that we have the same father. This isn't just some nice idea in our imagination. You guys, we are literally family with the same dad. My dad is your dad. We are not just kind of like brothers and sisters. We are really family. And if we can understand that our dad, if we can sometime even in these few minutes communicate that dad, and if you could just open your heart and say, maybe, just maybe, what they're saying is true. Maybe, just maybe, I can give him more access than I ever have before. Because I want to be loved by my Father in heaven. Because when my dad encourages me on the phone, or if I see him, he just has a way. That's all I can say is just to the yeah. deepest core of who I am. If he says something, everything changes. Yeah. If he says something about me, then I believe him. And so... Can I just keep going for just a second? You sure okay. Yes. I, I we're sharing this whole thing, and I'm, you know, we have a family, and Bob's an amazing dad too. But um, today, I just want to talk to you about some of the things that a dad can give us that no one else can. Is that okay? Our dad in heaven loves you and me on our worst day. Think about your worst day. Think about when you were in dire straits. Maybe it's today. I don't know when, when your worst day was. But I'll tell you about my worst day. And um, it was back about 15 years ago. And um, I had grown up in this Christian home. I had an amazing husband. But I did a very stupid, stupid, selfish thing. I had had an affair. And I'm a pastor of a church. And it never should have happened. I have this affair. I'm so confused. And I'm carrying this shame and this secret how could I have been so stupid? And if anyone has ever involved themselves in that, they understand just the confusion that's in your head. And I, I stopped the affair right away. But I knew that I had to, to, to get out of this mess and the bondage and the deception that had led me there. And I, and I prayed to the Lord. And I said, Jesus, forgive me for what I did. And I immediately heard him to tell him, tell my heart and whisper my heart to tell Bob about what had happened. And we did. And we both in our brokenness cried out to God and right. he came to this place and began a rescue process. Everyone say process. You know, whenever we have relationship issues, it's not like a snap of a finger or laying on a hand. We have to work through, don't we? A process of healing and, and forgiveness and, 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 and forgiving myself and all that stuff. It's not the story I'm telling today as much as I'm telling this story. Two weeks after I told Bob about the affair, I found out that that guy had gotten me pregnant. And this baby will not look like the other kids. My other kids are older. And um, it's a biracial situation. 
And that's when the enemy wanted to touch that very deepest part, and it's my identity. You see, that very deepest part where the Father can reach you, the enemy wants to attack that. And, and because of that, because he wants to alienate. Yep. That's the whole thing. If he can touch your identity, if he can, if, if, if you would begin to believe the lie that, that you are now disqualified, that you don't belong, right. that you no longer fit in, that you're the failure, yep. you're the disappointment. You, you, if you begin to believe that lie and feed that lie, guess what? You, you begin to isolate yourself. You begin to pull away. And you begin to believe the this, this scheme. And the scheme, um, why I use that word scheme, because it comes from the word schematic. Because it is a detailed plan to really isolate you and to remove you. And, and when you begin to believe that lie about yourself, all of a sudden, it does begin to touch your identity, your dignity, and your value. And, and that worth. very lie was telling mm -hmm. me, Audrey, who, you, this is basically what the enemy said to me on my worst day, walking out of that doctor's office, find out that, you know, I'm going to be known for the most stupid and selfish thing I had ever done. And you know what the lie was? You know, exactly that. Right. It was like, who do you think you are? What kind of child of God do you think that you are, that you would do something that selfish and that stupid and think that you're a, you, you can love people or think that you can be a testimony of God's goodness? Who do you think you are? And um, on that worst day, I remember walking to the car. I didn't think I could face my life. I didn't think that I'd ever have a story to tell. I, I thought my children were going to be messed up because of my mistake. But two days later, I'm alone with my dad, my, my earthly dad. He knew that I was having a baby. And he was, Bob, you will have to I admit. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, we don't tell this publicly very often. It was just the four of us that knew I was pregnant, me right. and Bob and my mom and my dad. And we and, had and a counselor. And one counselor. Mm -hmm. And what do you do, you guys? What do you do? We're national people, public. Everyone's going to know, and, and it's going to destroy my mom and dad's ministry, Everything is done. Okay, there's no simple answer here. And my, I don't want to say too much. This is pretty personal here. But I will say that me and Bob and my mom didn't know what to do. But the only thing my dad was, would say was, we're going to have a little, we're going to have another little baby. He celebrated. He was the first one to celebrate. Yeah. And then it was a couple days later, we weren't celebrating. I'm sorry, <laughs> but we weren't. You yeah. know what I mean? But her father immediately, without immediately, a second, in a nanosecond, without hesitation, began to celebrate. And he was the one that had the most on the line. He had his reputation. Right. And he was the first one to, without even a nano, as right. a nanosecond, right. was celebrating. Right. But it was a couple days later in the car with my dad at a, at a Home Depot parking lot, and I said, Dad, I feel safe with you, and I know. See, see, that's something your dad can give you that no one else can do is give you extreme protection and safety. Oh, there's something about a dad that protects you and keeps you safe. That's our Heavenly Father. Everyone just say, thank you, Father, that you keep me safe. You are my protector. You're the, the ultimate dad. See, that's just starting to open your heart right, right. now as I'm, I'm even sharing right. my story. And I was in the parking lot, and I said, Dad, there's a baby now. I don't know what I can do. How will we ever live through this? And he said one sentence that reached to that deepest part of my heart like I've been talking about today. He says, Audrey, that's what you did. But that is not who you are. Only my dad could have said that because it wasn't him talking he was being a representative that moment of my Father in Heaven. I want you to feel in this room today that we together, us and Ralph and Joanne and the leadership here, we are being representatives to tell you from straight from the Father, we want to be that messenger and representative to say, that's what you did, but that is not who you are. And I want to jump in here because possibly... There are those, because we haven't all had that awesome experience. But that experience was for Audrey in that moment, but it's also for you in this moment. Exactly. And you may have approached your father, and you may have, rather than being loved and covered and protected and provided for, 
you have been you have possibly been shamed or exposed or yes. rejected, you know, or whatever it might be. And it's just like, you know, how 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 could I ever approach a father again? Well, I want you to know that that, again, was a scheme of the enemy, you know, to bruise your heart, to wound you, yes. to prevent you from coming to your heavenly father. You see, each of us, each of us, no matter how wonderful, no matter how awesome, uh, no matter how great our earthly father is, or possibly on the other spectrum, how wounding and damaging and absent our father was, whether it was their choice or not. I mean, there's just so many dynamics. But no matter what it was, we are all pre-designed. Say pre-designed. Pre-designed. Okay. I'll throw, I'll throw another word at you. Predestined. How's pre that? Now, that one gets a little scary. But we're pre-designed, <laughs> predestined by God, okay, to receive a father's love. No matter how wonderful or good it was, we are all designed, Romans 8 says, to receive the spirit of adoption by where we cry out, Abba, Papa, Daddy. You see, there is a place within each of our hearts, every one of us, that only Father God yes. can fill. Yes. No, and so we want to reconcile. We want to heal these relationships with our earthly dad as much as we can. But no matter how we pursue it, no matter how we try, it'll never satisfy. But when you begin to experience, say experience, experience. your father, your heavenly father's love, all of a sudden, all of the questions get answered. Yes. All of a Settling. sudden, the yes. identity issues are resolved. All of a sudden, you begin to experience peace. All of a sudden, the anger begins to subside. And for a girl, Because you are satisfied. You're adopted. You belong. You are a son. You are a daughter yes. of the Most High. That is the invitation, to be adopted into his yes, family. Yes, that is so you good. You belong. And, it, and for, we all have questions, and men and women, son, and I'm going to call us sons and daughters today. Is that okay? Because yes. we're celebrating our dad. Sons and daughters, we all have different questions. But girls, as daughters, we have questions. Are we safe? Are we beautiful? And are we priority? That's our question. Only my dad can answer those questions to me, that I am safe to him, for him. I am... I, it might not feel like it sometimes in this world, but I am safe with him, and I am beautiful to him, and I am his priority. And for a My son, turn? yeah. Okay. Oh no, <laughs> go, go ahead. And for a son, oh, I see. You see, uh, you feel significant. Yeah. Yes. You feel adventure. Yes. And you feel that companionship that you mm -hmm. have with your dad. Right. <laughs> so where were you going with that? You know what? I actually. <laughs> Like, I think you just yanked that one off the shelf. No, I have something in mind. Okay. I have something in mind. Okay. You know what I love is that, like Ralph and no, Joanne said, she just... pulled that one off the shelf, people. But now she's going to fix it. Okay. The whole... T ever since we've stayed up here this morning, I actually believe the Lord wants to do some deep healing in hearts today. I agree. And so I guess I'm just saying, let's, instead of just waiting until the end, let's just... Just, we're not ready for that yet. Okay. Okay, good. Good, good. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Uh, come back, come back. And okay. it's yours, baby. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't we well scripted this morning? <laughs> we have got it together. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I do want to finish the story. Yes. Um, you know, of our marriage crisis. And uh, we did. We found that Audrey was pregnant. And again, it was a process. It was a journey. But I just want to say this, that Can the you biggest... Just, I mean, I'm going to interrupt you. The biggest question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're good. All right, you good. just stay right there. Okay. I'll stay here and you yeah. stay there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'll give you the pen okay. when I'm done talking. Okay. Perfect. Okay. 
this is actually a communication, you know, style trick. Some, some, <laughs> some will throw objects at each other. Yeah. Well, rather we than just throwing it, just hold on to it. And, and when then you're done talking, it's like a talking then stick. you pass it on. Okay, now it's your turn. Okay, now it's your turn. Okay, now. thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, so we, we, all right, we had, we were a mess. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Much more than we are this morning. <laughs> yes. All right. We were a definite we mess. We were a mess. <laughs> but uh, when, when, when we're working through this pregnancy, not only are we trying to reconnect with each other, we're trying to preserve our family. We have yeah. three children. And, and a fourth on the way. And, I mean, it was challenging. But the greatest challenge that I had, you know, as a, as a father, was will I be able to love this baby as my own? That was my biggest question. I, I love my children. I, one of the greatest ambitions of my life is to be a great dad. I, I just adore my kids. But I recognize that I did not give, you know, I didn't participate with this. You know, I, she's impregnated by someone else, and now I'm being required to father a baby that is, quote, not mine. And, and I was just being really honest with me because I knew the anger that was inside of me, the rage, you know, against her and what she did to me and to our family. I mean, all these, all these things that I could kind of rationalize and place all the blame on her. But where I was deficient was in my capacity for love. Because I did not know if I would be able to love this baby as my own or if this baby would forever be a reminder of the betrayal and the rejection. Would I always then look at this child and think, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, was that in that? And the whole thing was is that I knew that this baby was innocent. I knew that this baby had done nothing wrong. I knew that I had the problem. This was my problem, and I wasn't getting over it. And that was my deepest challenge. And I just kind of kept praying and pressing into God, you know, whatever it might be, you know, just kind of take it away. But what I have discovered is this. In order to be a great dad, you must first, Learn to be a great son. You must first know what it's like to crawl into the lap of your heavenly father and allow him to embrace you in your pain, mm -hmm. in your confusion, and in your anger. Mm -hmm. You, if you want to be a great dad, if you want to be a great granddad, you must first learn what it is to be a great son, where you know who your source is and that you go to him because I was trying to find it within me and I did not have the capacity. But when I am loved, when I am fully accepted, when I know how fully forgiven I am in him, when his realities truly become mine, I'm transformed. Now I have something to give. To be a great dad, you must first become a great son. So one day I, I asked my pastor, and I mean, I was in chaos. I mean, I was a mess. And uh, we, we just had a quick coffee because I was struggling, you know, with the, with the baby coming. And they, people were telling me, you need to give this baby up for adoption. You can't keep this baby. All those kinds of questions. And I didn't know what to do. And I asked my pastor one morning, I said, Leo, what do I do? And he said, Bob, there's a baby on your doorstep. What do you do? Will you participate with this fatherless generation or will you become a father to the fatherless? You've got to grow up. See, that's the invitation again. Be a great son. Learn from your father. And be a great dad. So, when our son was born, when my son was born, I gave him my name, Robert. 
Robert, because I don't want my son to ever question or wonder one day in his life whose boy he is, he's my son. Mm -hmm. His middle name, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I just got a little emotional. There, <laughs> I, I won't see him till late tonight. <laughs> but uh, his middle name is Theodore, and that means divine gift because he's not an accident. He's not a mistake. He's not the result of a sexual affair. But just like my other three kids, he's born out of the heart of God and entrusted to us. We're a family, and he belongs. Isn't that awesome? That's the Father's heart. Can we show the picture? Would that be okay? Sure. Do you, have, do you guys have, have the picture by any chance? There they are. Yeah. Awesome. Yay. Yeah. So uh, there on the left is my son, Robert. He's uh, 14 years old. He's going to grade nine. My son, Christopher, Audrey, myself, my daughter, Janelle, she uh, lives at home with us. And so Robert and Janelle, they hang out and cost me a lot of money when I'm away from home. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, on the far right is my son, David, and his beautiful wife there, Tessa, and we're a family. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Now, I share this picture with you because I really hope that it does bring hope. Yeah. It does bring hope. And as well, I would love for you to share our story. That's one thing. But more than that, I'd love for you to create your story. I'd love to see you fight for your family, mm -hmm. to fight for your generations, for your legacy. Mm -hmm. And you may say, you know what, I've already made too many mistakes. I've already been a part of divorce, this or that. Hey, stop. Just stop right where you are. Mm -hmm. Because you are a beloved son and daughter of the Most High. And your Redeemer lives. Yes. And in this moment, in this day, he wants to begin to impart new hope, new future, new beginnings for you. Your Redeemer lives. So as we continue this morning, yes, everyone in this room, no exception, I want every person in here to experience the love of what a father really is, what your Heavenly Father is. We're all at different places, but we all can take a first step. And the, the scripture that came to me this morning was Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. When Jesus is praying to the Father, because you see, I like to look at how Jesus related to the Father, right, so that I can learn how I can relate to the Father. It's all still pretty emotional. I'm really grateful, honey. Oh, You're okay. such a good dad. Thank, Thank you, you, honey. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for loving our family and fighting for our family. Okay, okay, stop. <laughs> okay. 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 Okay, you can have the pen now. Okay. <laughs> Matthew eleven twenty. <laughs> Matthew eleven twenty five. Jesus is praying. How many think that probably Jesus knows the best how to relate to his father, to our father? And he said, Father, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Thank you so much, Daddy, for hiding the truth from those who consider themselves so wise and so clever and so smart and so intellectual, and you reveal your secrets to the childlike ones. Father, it pleased you to do it this way. To me, that says everyone in us gets an invitation today. Will you be like a child in the way that you are so dependent on your dad? I tell my story of 15 years ago where I didn't think I could breathe because I was in so much fear of my future with this whole thing. I never saw that picture 15 years ago. But God did. But I think back of how bad I would say I needed my dad in heaven in those moments. But I don't want that to change. I need him as much today on, uh, in June 2016 as I did 15 years ago when I was in that. I want to know every day, every breath, every moment in my life, I am a childlike one who knows I need my dad. Right. The, thing, the, the thing that changes, you know, from then to now is just your confidence and trust. Yeah. The dependency doesn't change, but there's there's a greater confidence mm -hmm. because you've walked with your father. Yes. You know, and there's a greater confidence and trust that you have. But the dependency doesn't change. We must remain childlike. And to be childlike is to be a dependent one. And, and a childlike one knows how to ask questions. You know what? 
I think that's part of that thing is like those who consider them so wise and clever, they don't need to ask God about stuff, do they? They pretty much think they've they got, got it all together. Out. I don't want to be like that. I want to actually ask my dad, this access I have to the God Almighty, the most majestic one, creator, who we will not even be able to fathom. We won't even be able to fathom when we get to heaven because he's so great, marvelous, beautiful, and splend full of splendor. But to think that I have access to him and I get to be his child, I am going to ask him a lot of questions. When I give him my day, I'm going to surrender him and say, wow, dad, this is what I see today, but what do you see? You know, dad, this decision is happening, but what do you see? And I have this picture in my mind because you see everyone in here has been given the gift of an imagination. And that imagination can be used for doom and gloom and worry in the worst possible scenario. Or you can use it to begin to just invite God into that secret place of where you feel so loved and so taken care of. And, and, and see him on his throne and, and just, um, you know, the realities of heaven are real. And so I remember in my heart, in my mind's eye, in my heart, I remember seeing one day I was praying to God, and I saw a word picture, uh, just a picture, a vision that I want to share with you. And it was God in a, in a, a, God was the father, the king was in a castle, and he was in a room called the strategy room where he was with his generals, where he was strategizing world situations. There are things that I believe that God is strategizing for this world and all that stuff. And he was in it thick, and they were discussing and they were doing this and I came to the door and he literally completely turned away from everything he was doing and he says oh my girl's here and he gave me all of his attention he said sure this stuff is important but my girl just came and I want to talk to her that's you that's you you're a when you're a childlike one he stops everything for you and races across heaven and says my girl's here and she wants to talk she wants to have coffee with me today. We want to talk today. That is intimate. That is loving. That is relationship. And if you're not there, just ask God to help you to get there and just say, I want it. Can you just say, I want that to him? Yeah, like that's all it takes is just to say, that's what I want. I want that kind of relationship with my father. You know, my, my little son, people say, I don't hear God's voice. I don't know how to hear God's voice. Well, then just practice and just try and just do things out of the ordinary and just say, God, I want to hear you. Teach me how to hear you. Just ask him. Kids ask questions. Have you ever noticed kids ask questions? If they don't get something, they don't get it, they ask, why don't I get this? Like, just ask him. My little son David was once writing a letter, and he, he was five years old, that little kid on the far right. He was such a cute little kid, you can imagine. He was five years old. He didn't, hadn't gone to school yet. And he was saying, he was writing a letter to his cousins, and he says, Mom, how do you spell chudder? And I said, what? How do you spell chudder? I was like, I felt so bad. I was like, I don't, I don't know what you're saying, honey. You're so cute, but I don't know what you're saying. And he said, I said, try and use that in a sense. Like, tell me what you're writing. He goes, when will we see each other again? <laughs> and we all laugh and we say that's so sweet. Right? And I think that's how God is with us hearing his voice. He wanted to say, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. But you know what? I'm willing to be childlike and just try and practice. And, th and if I hear a whisper in my heart, I'm going to act on it and see where that goes and begin to tune in and learn the frequency of my father's voice. Because hearing his voice is what helps you to receive his love. Yeah, good. And childlike ones left open presents, just to let you know. Mm -hmm. God has a lot of presents for you on Father's Day. And little kids don't go, oh, my goodness, you shouldn't have done that. I'm not going to open that. I'm not going to open that present. No, a little kid tears it open. And your Father in heaven has many gifts for you of joy, peace, provision, protection, promotion, and perfect love. And I want you to open those presents today on Father's Day and make it a Father's Day that you'll never forget. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to take a moment and pray with people. Is that all right? Okay. And just one final thought. And just in my process of being a dad and wanting to be a great dad, Okay, I, I have learned and I continue to learn over the years of how to be a great son. But the other thing is, is that my dad, he's really awesome. He really, really is. Um, um, however, in our family, we experienced the pains of divorce. I remember receiving the phone call from my dad saying, Bob, I thought you should hear it from me. I'm leaving your mom. 
You see, and, and I, I never, ever wanted to hear that. Never, and then as well, n- never did I want to ever have to make that phone call. And uh, my, my dad is really, really, really wonderful. But as I have journeyed and allowed my Heavenly Father to heal my heart, guess what I did? I was able then to release my earthly dad. You see, because I was really imposing on him to be or to do something for me mm. that really he was incapable of. Yeah. I mean, he's I mean, he's the most loving, generous guy. I mean, he loves me. He he adores me. We hold each other. We hug each other. We cry with each other. But you see, he's unable to give to me, you know, really what I need. But my father can. And so yeah. there was a, a, a real season in, in our lives of mending and healing because he knew what a disappointment he was to his family of how he had failed his sons. And what had happened to him is that he then removed himself from the family and went to a place of isolation because he was a disappointment. But as my Heavenly Father healed my heart, I was then able to pursue my father. And I, it's, a, it's a long story, but I was able to sit with him and say, Dad, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You know, let's just, you know, I, I'm not angry I'm not upset you know you don't have to do or be anything let's just be with each other and we were able to lay those offenses down yeah and we were able to hug and embrace you know and I you know I, all I'm saying is that pursue one another continue to pursue but also recognize that possibly you'll never be able to quote restore it to the way that you'd want it to be but you can restore it as much as you can. And you can involve them in, in your life as much as it's safe. And it's important to do so because God can then heal our hearts. Mm-hmm. So today, whatever it might be, we just want to take a moment to pray with you. Mm-hmm. Because we all have a father. Yeah. And we all have a heavenly father. Yeah. And so what I want to do is to help you best in a whole new way is to connect with the extravagance of your heavenly father, that he would then begin to speak the truth of your identity, the truth of your dignity, of your value and your worth, that your heavenly father would place upon you his stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. You are my daughter. You are my son in whom I'm well pleased. And when your identity is secure, when you know where you have come from and where you are going, then you become extremely effective in Mm -hmm. serving others in this world. Mm -hmm. Because no longer are you then a user or a taker, but then you can be a giver because your father is your source. And he will heal your heart and give you more than what you could ever, ever need. So let's bow your head and close your eyes. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you, this will be led by you, that this isn't something we're going to conjure up because every heart right here is very precious to you. This is a very precious time in your presence. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll cover this time and lead us as we pray. And I just want to say to you a message from your Father in heaven, and it's simply this, you are not a disappointment. Some of you have been feeling like you are a disappointment to God. And so when you're talking, you're thinking, well, that's really nice for you, but I don't deserve that. I'm not that great. But you are not a disappointment. So I want you in your heart to just see your father smiling at you. And just as a little child, just running into his arms. I know that's a big step, but he is that real. And you are that loved. So just go ahead and just, you're not a disappointment, honey, so come over here. It's okay. Just come home. Just come home to your father's arms. Let me be a dad to you. Let me be that dad you've always craved. As girls, just let me call you beautiful. And let, and you can dance and twirl and, 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 and be that little girl you've been craving to be. And you can just let me celebrate you. For some men, I just see you experiencing 
the firm grip of a strong hand on your shoulder and him speaking words to you. You're my son. Yeah. I affirm you. You're mine. And no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, your father looks you in the eye and says, welcome home. Welcome home. I've been waiting. I've been looking. I've been pursuing you. Yeah. Welcome home. And just allow yourself to cry. Allow yourself yeah. to feel. You're not a disappointment. You're not a failure. You're a son. You're a daughter. You yeah. belong. Yeah. And allow yourself to come home. And yeah. then this is what the father does. Is he celebrates you. Yeah. He celebrates. The entire household. All of he heaven celebrates. Yeah. He celebrates. He celebrates and dances over your life. Mm. You may have heard it said, and just keep your eyes closed, that there is a God-shaped hole that only He can fill. A God-shaped hole in your heart that only God can fill in your heart. But I'd like to take that a step deeper today and say, there's a U-shaped hole in God's heart. There's a place in God's heart that only you can fill. Yeah. And He's been missing you. He wants to... He wants to have daily communion with you, just be, not, not because it's something you should do, but you're invited to do just because he's got so much wisdom. He wants to give you so much direction, so much assurance, so much security, so much value and identity that only he can give. With courage, take that step. Just go a little closer. Just go a little closer to your dad. And some, some of you are just letting him hold you now, letting your father hold you. And just melt and be safe in the presence of your father. He's a good dad. He loves you on your worst day.